Hi, welcome to another video from thiskindofgirl.com, the home of smart and sexy swinger advice. If you want to learn all about swinging, I will take you from nervous newbie to sophisticated swinger in no time. If you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel and press the like button and you can also find me on social media at thiskindofgirl2020 and check out my site at thiskindofgirl.com. So let's get straight down into today's video. I am talking all about how to swing with another couple. Now this is a topic which people have asked me in the past and it kind of leads on to something which I'm working on, which is um, a video on how does it work? Like how does swinging work? Because this is something which I get asked all the time. So. Today's video is how to swing with another couple. Let's get straight down. Ooh. Let's get straight down into it and start finding out. So, if you have been chatting to another couple online, perhaps you have had a swinger first date with them where you guys have all discussed your limits, your kinks, you've read all the advice on this kind of girl.com, you know the questions you've had to ask, you're, you've had a vanilla date and you're all feeling pretty good, you've discussed it with your partner. So everything is in place to start having some physical swinger fun. Um, now, it's only natural that you want to meet up and you want to turn your fantasies into realities. But how do you do this? Is there a certain etiquette you have to follow when swinging with another couple? Having your first intimate playtime with other swingers doesn't have to be scary. Follow my masterclass in this video in how to swing with another couple to make sure your first time is a memorable one. Now, as ever, this advice isn't just for couples, it's also for single people who wanna swing with a couple as well. Um, some of the advice is more tailored towards couples and couples, but also if you're single, listen up because you will benefit from it basically. So as I said, after you've spent time chatting to another couple, perhaps this, um, perhaps you can arrange to meet um, in a swingers club or a swingers event or you're arranging to meet in private. Now, I, if I'm meeting in private, I prefer to meet on um, neutral ground. I suppose the swinging club is also neutral ground um, as opposed to my place or their home. Um, a hotel or a private Apartment is always um, preferable if it's not a club. Um, now, if you do want to host another couple, then I suggest using a spare room or lounge, basically somewhere away from your intimate private bedroom. Now, you could disagree with me. Some people like to get down in their bedrooms. This is fine. But for me personally, that is our space. Um, and it's, it's just something which I don't like to do, but you might disagree with me. Um, meeting in a private apartment, such as, um, you know, a private hire, or um, there's a few I've listed here, <laughs> I'm not endorsed by them, I'm not going to say what they are, uh, is something you could also do. Also, if you're arranging to meet like two or three couples, it's pr your, your place is probably going to get full really quickly, so um, that's probably not preferable. Uh, you probably want to have a little bit more space. So before you meet, chances are you have spent some, can you hear that build, the builders next door, sorry. So chances are you have spent a little while messaging um, on whatever, you know, WhatsApp or Kick or whatever it is you've used or, or messages on the Swinger dating site you've used or whatever it is you've been chatting. Um, you've got to know one another and you know what each other likes and dislikes. Now it's a good idea to refresh your memory, so read through the messages you have exchanged and pick up on anything that you or they have said to make your first time playing with them a memorable one. 
For example, if they say they um, really like massage or they really like certain toys and you have them, oops, you could um, bring them with you and make it, um, make it more memorable, basically. So if you're anything like me, you will probably be pretty excited when you arrive. Now, it may be tempting to get straight down to it. Some couples do, um, but you should spend time building up that connection again. Um, some people like to relax and have a drink and have a chat, which I fully support. Um, and just basically make sure you're all on the same page. Talk about, you know, your wants, desires. Make sure, has anything changed? Um, are you also wanting to experience what you spoke about before? Because people's limits, expectations, boundaries, they change. So just always make sure, don't just dive in basically. Just make sure that you're all still cool with the proceedings. Um, so... This is, I'm not going to be overly explicit because this is a YouTube video and um, on my site, thiscangirl.com, I, on the article, it is a little bit more explicit what I've written. I'm not going to say the words because I don't know where I'll be kicked off for YouTube. <laughs> so the transition um, from smooching on the sofa to having uh, sex with another couple is... Um, a gradual one. Now, the slower you take things, the greater the enjoyment and the less pressure uh, you will all feel. Now, it can be tempting to tear off one another's clothes and dive in, but trust me, this is far from ideal. Now, you could start by playing with your own partner um, and, sorry, I'm just reading this. Start by playing with your own partner and chances are the other couple will then start playing with their partner um, and then things naturally progress. There's no like, well, in my in my experience, there's no like kind of formal, right, we're going to swap now and we're going to do this and this. Just gently, gently ease into it. You can start off with some soft swap, start off with some... Um, lots of foreplay, using lots of lube, perhaps use some toys and just be, basically you want to build up um, sensual connection as opposed to diving straight away to having sex um, because you're going to have far more enjoyment if you do this. Um, always make sure you use protection from the start because should somebody else join in, you want to, yes, or then you may be having sex with your own partner so you don't use you wouldn't use condoms with them normally. Uh, make sure you use them from the off because should other people want to join in, um, you want to make sure that everybody is protected. So a top tip is uh, use protection straight from the word go. Now it's put uh, perfectly normal to have sex, start, relax, chat, um, kind of refresh things, talk about it and then have sex again a little later. Now, a lot of parties I've been to, they're like this. You don't just kind of go at it for three or four hours straight, especially if you're in a swingers club. You could play with a couple, leave, um, you know, go for a, get a drink, relax, reconnect with your partner, and then perhaps play with another couple or go back to the same couple. Basically, there's no expectation to just, like, keep at it for all all hours basically taking time to chill out is essential and check in with your partner are they okay would they you know how are they feeling would they like anything is everything okay and just basically um making sure that one another is is okay is really important now after you have finished playing so i tend not to linger for too long after swinging in any situation as I like to reconnect with my partner or myself if I've played as a single person in private. Now, if you have met at a club, as I said, don't feel obliged to like stay with that couple all night unless you want to. There's plenty of people to meet and play with. Um, and likewise, they probably want to reconnect with their single person. They probably want to go and meet other people. Um, so don't feel obliged to stay with them all night. Um, if you have met at a hotel or an apartment, um, sometimes one of the people who booked it, uh, one of the couples, sometimes they will stay there overnight 
Um, and at which point you kind of, you, you know, you want to leave them to, to reconnect and enjoy and unwind. So again, um, don't feel obliged to, to stay or, like sometimes people have asked me, would I like to stay? I, I still wouldn't. Um, you know, people sometimes ask me and ask, would we like to stay um, as guests, which is really kind. But for us personally, we we like to go and unwind in our own space. This is unique to us. This is what we like. So anyway, it's up to you. Um, so likewise, if I have um, organised the accommodation or whatever, then um, I usually say like, I'm going to go run a bath, guys, and that kind of like brings proceedings to a close, made it clear I want to go and relax and unwind. So don't feel bad about wanting to take a time out basically at the end of a session and just un re rewind, unwind and relax. That's what I was trying to say. So reconnecting um, with your partner after swinging is crucial. Um, but also, kind of catching up with other people after swinging is also important. Now, you don't have to be like texting them constantly the next day. If you've, if they're people who you've been chatting to, just send them a text um, or, or give them a call. Just ask them, is everything all right? Um, you know, just send them a text saying, hi, we really enjoyed last night. It was great to meet. If you want to meet up again, say so. If you don't want to meet up again, say so. If you want to take time out for yourselves, say so. Whatever it is. Um, just let them know basically yes or no and that all is good. So I hope this video has shed some light on what it's like to play with another couple and how to like go through that process. If you want more advice do check out the post on thiskindofgirl.com. Um, I will put the description down below for you. Um, Please do join me next time where I'll be sharing my top 10 tips for playing with other swingers. Join me then.